Hello and welcome back. In chapter 13, we get to work with graph theory. Thirteen one, uh, our introduction, we'll look at graphs, paths, and circuits. So this is, relatively speaking, a new uh, field in math. I'll use new sort of loosely. It's older than any of us, uh, but it is definitely younger than calculus. Uh, Euler was the founder. You'll remember that name from our Venn and Euler diagrams. So he had, uh, was a pretty prolific mathematician. He had a uh, quite an impressive body of work. Uh, the beginning of it uh, was uh, what's referred to as the Keynesburg Bridge Problem. So the idea here is that we have a landmass here. We have an island. We have another island. And another landmass. And there were bridges across these. So there were two bridges connecting the northern chunk of land to the left island two more bridges from the left island to the southern chunk of land, one bridge between the two islands, and then one bridge per side connecting uh, the eastern island to the north and south land masses. So seven bridges all together. So this is just a, a setup uh, that existed at the time in uh, the city of Keynesburg. And uh, the idea came up, the question came up of, is it possible and how to cross each bridge exactly once? We're assuming uh, we don't mean with swimming or ice skating or parachuting or running around the entire circumference of the earth or anything crazy like that. Just walking on land and bridges, is it possible to connect each or to use each bridge exactly one time? And if so, uh, what is that path? How do you get it done? So we're going to come back to that one a little bit later. We need a little bit more graph theory under our belts before we attempt to answer that one. So some definitions. What we mean by graph. Finite set of points. These are referred to as vertices. Connected by line segments. Those are edges. And if you have an edge that connects a vert vertex to itself,
you have yourself a loop. So typically we use capital letters to denote vertices. So here's a quick example of a graph. So we have vertices A through F, and let's see, so we'll pick some edges. So AB is going to be an edge, BC will be an edge, uh, CD will be an edge, DE will be an edge. We'll have a loop there on E, and we'll connect F and A for an edge as well. So our vertices, A, B, C, D, E, and F. A, B is an edge. So notice to identify an edge, we just use the names of the adjacent vertices, which vertices are being connected. Uh, but for example, B, D is not an edge. I don't have a single line segment connecting B and D. EE e is an edge because it connects a vertex to, it happens to be the same vertex, but we are able to use that edge and get to a vertex. Since it happens to be the same vertex, this is also considered a loop. Uh, one other note. There is no vertex where AF and CD meet. So just because two edges meet doesn't mean there's necessarily a vertex there. So this is not a vertex. This is just happens to be a spot where two edges cross. So two edges crossing does not guarantee a vertex. So the next thing we'll do is we'll look at um, just a real world example where uh, graph theory would be used and that would be in uh, creating simplified maps. Uh, so, for example, if we look at Central America, uh, you may want to uh, kind of uh, pull up a map of Central America while we go through this. Um, we're going to, uh, for the moment, neglect the islands. We're just going to uh, sort of look at uh, the land masses that connect uh, Mexico and Colombia. So we have Belize, and next door we have Guatemala. 
and they do share a border, so I'm going to draw an edge. So here the edges will represent borders. You see a vertex, you have a country. You see an edge that is representing a border. Now we have adjacent to Guatemala, we have El Salvador. They do share a border, so I'm going to draw them. But there is, if you look at uh, a map, and again, if you just Google map of South America, you can see the, uh, where I'm looking. Uh, you'll see Belize and El Salvador do not share a border. So I'm not going to draw an edge connecting those two. Uh, similarly for Honduras, uh, Honduras is adjacent to Guatemala. It is adjacent to El Salvador. It is not adjacent to Belize. I can't walk from Honduras to Belize without going through another country, specifically Guatemala in this case. Okay, so then our next at bat, uh, we have uh, Nicaragua. Which shares a sizable border with Honduras, but does not directly touch El Salvador. Uh, to the south of Nicaragua, we have Costa Rica. Costa Rica doesn't touch any of the other nations that we've looked at so far. And then we have our famous Panama, the most narrow portion of Central America, hence why the Panama Canal uh, was located there and not in one of the other nations. Panama is adjacent to Costa Rica. It isn't adjacent to any other nations on our list here. So this would be a graph of South America countries and borders. Uh, after that we're into Colombia which is in South America not Central America. Uh, similarly uh, Guatemala and Belize touch Mexico which is in North America not uh, Central America. So this would be an example of one place where we can create uh, sort of a simplified visual representation, and that's the idea with these graphs. Uh, we can also do the same thing with floor plans. So let's say... So here's the outline of a house. I'm going to kind of highlight our outside doors here. And our inside doors.
So our rooms, room A, room B, room C, room D, and room E. So in this case, each vertex is a room, edge, it's either a doorway or path. So room A and room B do connect to one another. Room A also connects to room C. And room A will connect to the outside, which would give a second way to get to room B. And we'll continue, we'll hook back to A in a moment. Where else we can get from the outside? Well, we can just connect it on here. E has an outside door as well. So we can go from A to E. So A, I can get directly to B, directly to C, and directly to E if I'm going outside. I can get to B two different ways, inside or outside. I can't go directly from A to D, however. So there's no edge connecting A and D. As far as B, we've talked about it connecting to A in two different ways. Uh, B does connect to E via the outside. Uh, B does have a way to get to room D directly. Uh, B and C are not directly connected to one another, so no edge there. Uh, room C, we've already talked about it connecting to A and to B. That's a lack of connection to B specifically. Uh, C and D do have a doorway, so there's an edge there. Uh, C and E also have a doorway. We'll draw an edge there. Uh, D and E do not have a direct path between them, so I will not draw an edge connecting D and E. So this is not the only way I could have, <coughs> excuse me, drawn this. I could have conveyed the same information with a different looking graph. So here, let me leave the vertices where they were before. So A and B, we had double connected. A and C connected once. A and E connected once. C and D were connected. B and D were connected, and B and E were connected. Now, before I drew that loop around here, I could also have just drawn it straight through here and still convey the message that I can get directly from room B to room E without going inside any other rooms of the house. Uh, so even though you know, on my floor plan, it would look like I was walking through other rooms, as far as a graph theory graph goes, I'm allowed to just draw that edge the way it is. So you can move vertices and edges around. The representation is not necessarily unique. So I want to do another uh, pair of graphs.
Okay, so here is graph A, B, C, and D. This graph I'm going to use the same letters A, B, C, and D. So I'm going to ask you to uh, pause it for a moment and list out the edges on graph 1 and graph 2. See if you can find every single edge that exists on each of those graphs. Welcome back. So some edges that exist in graph 1, AB, AC, and D. Sure, they're connected. Uh, B and C are connected. B and D are also connected. And C and D were also connected, and it doesn't look like anyone was connected twice, uh, like our A, B path before. Uh, as far as graph number two, edges that we had, uh, A, B was an edge. A, C was an edge. A, D was an edge. B, C was an edge, BD was an edge, and CD was an edge. So you might have noticed all of the edges were the same. Vertices, we had A, B, C, and D. Vertices, we had A, B, C, and D. So this is another idea that the representation, again, is not unique. So you can have two different looking graphs that really represent the same collection of vertices and edges. Um, there is a sort of uh, uh, sub field of study within graph theory on uh, what's called planarity. And the idea is, can you draw all the vertices and edges in a way that no two edges cross one another? Uh, there's a, a, a series of fun games and apps that involve this question. Um, and as far as uh, practical applications, uh, circuitry uses that kind of question of, okay, uh, here are the things that we need connected. Uh, bridges on circuit boards are sort of more expensive and cumbersome to make for companies. So they're definitely interested in uh, an arrangement like this where no edges cross one another versus this, they would have to then uh, include a bridge when they constructed the circuit. So just a, a fun little side field of study, but uh, they would still connect all the same vertices with the same edges. So one other bit of vocab. This goes into how we describe the graph. Not only listing out vertices and edges, uh, but talking about uh, various uh, properties they have, one being the degree. Vertex is a singular, vertices would be the plural, if you're wondering why I've been switching back and forth between those similar sounding words. The degree of a vertex is the number of edges of the vertex.
All right, so for this one, we'll call this A, B, C, and D. And let's see, we'll connect A and D. A and B, B and D, and B and C. So vertex A has a degree of 2, vertex B a degree of 3. And there's three different ways if you're standing on B, if you picture that being sort of an island and these being bridges off of it, there's three different ways to step off the island B. C has a degree of 1 and D has a degree of 2. There's two different ways to leave that vertex. Whereas C, there's only one way to step off of that island, the vertex like an island. That's as opposed to another example. A shorter one. Vertex A here would have a degree 2. There's two different uh, edges I can use to walk off of vertex A. Similar for B, two different edges I can walk off to get out of edge B. Now where the loops come in is where it gets a little bit sort of unusual looking but again if you think of these as being things that you can actually walk across and the vertices being islands it'll make a little bit more sense there's Alpha Charlie and Bravo so vertex A Two different ways I can walk off of that vertex. Uh, vertex B actually has a degree of four. Here's one edge, here's another edge. Now this third edge counts twice because I could start and move this way, I could start and move that way. There's two different ways I can exit and use that same edge. So one two from here and the edge counts twice that would have a degree of four even though there are just three edges connected to b and c of course then a degree of in this case just two next idea that we want to talk about is the idea of parity. Recall from your algebra days, parity means even odd. Let me construct a new graph for this example. Here's vertex A, vertex B, vertex C, vertex D. And let's see connect them up like so and D will go ahead and give him a nice pretty loop so vertex A a degree of 2 2 is an even number so a is considered an even vertex. So vertex B, also a degree of 2, that would make that also an even vertex. So 
degree of C. I see three ways that I can step off of vertex C, making that an odd vertex, and vertex D, also degree 3, making it also an odd vertex. So next we'll talk movement on the graph. Which would take us to paths and circuits. So a path is a sequence of adjacent vertices and the edges connecting them. Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, and Foxtrot. And let's see what we want to connect. So Alpha and Foxtrot will connect. Alpha and Echo will connect. Uh, Alpha and Charlie will go ahead and connect those guys. Um, Bravo and let's see, Echo and Delta will connect those. And Let's see, Foxtrot and Charlie will connect those guys. So one example of a path I can take I could start at vertex A. I can take that to E. Take E to B and B to D. So A, E, B, D is an example of a path. I couldn't, for example, call A, B part of a path because there is no edge directly connecting A and B. So that's what we mean by adjacent vertices. A and E are adjacent, A and F are adjacent, A and C are adjacent because they have edges connecting them. A and B is not adjacent. So that's one example of a path. So I started at A, I went to E, from E I went to B, from B I went to D. So I have a starting point and an ending point. And let's do a simpler graph this time. Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie. A, B, C, A is a path. So I started at vertex A. I went to vertex B since it was adjacent. C was adjacent to B. A was adjacent to C. And I'm back where I started. So that is worth another definition, a path that starts and ends at the same vertex is a circuit.
So that's a different use of the word circuit than uh, what we talked about before. I was talking about a physical uh, circuit when we're talking plane error embeddings, although uh, that also does have to do with the idea that we're doing here. But uh, for our graph theory, graph to be considered a circuit, uh, that's all it needs is it has to have some path that starts and ends at the same place. Now that's not the only circuit we could have had. Uh, we could have had a circuit uh, that went from B to C to A to B. That is both a path and a circuit. So certainly a, B, C, A is not the only path that would exist there. And we could have gone the other direction too. We could have gone A, C, B, A and consider that a path and a circuit. Uh, another descriptor for graphs, this is as you can see a bigger section, is a connected graph. Uh, if I haven't introduced you to the symbol yet, uh, it is a handy little symbol. If you see a backwards capital E, that's a stand-in for that phrase, there exists. Uh, so a graph is connected if there exists a path between any two vertices. This one, um, I'm going to flip over here. It's easiest just to kind of see it in action. See some graphs that are connected and that are not. So for this, you pick any two vertices and I can create a path in between them. So even if we want to go from M to J, I could go with M, A, T, H, K to J. Uh, J and T, I can go J to K to H to T. I can get from any one vertex to any other vertex. So this is connected. This one, not connected. I can't go from any of the other ones to E. Uh, this graph, also not connected. I can't get from R to S, for example. Uh, this next one, kind of a strange looking one, it looks at first like it might be connected.
This one is not connected. The reason being, there are no paths that can take me directly from A to D. Remember that places where edges meet don't guarantee there's a vertex there. If I don't draw a separate vertex here, there is no vertex here. So for example, there is not a path from A to D. So that graph is not connected. Sometimes I'll just say disconnected graph. Same idea. So now that we know connected and disconnected, uh, I also want to look at the idea of a bridge. All right, so the definition is a bit of a mouthful, but uh, once you see a couple examples, you'll see it, it sort of intuitively uh, should make sense. Uh, so a bridge is an edge of a connected graph that if removed would create a disconnected graph. All right, so I'll make a little uh, kind of bow tie looking graph here. alpha 3 foxtrot on the vertices. Uh, you should sort of intuitively be able to see that we have only one bridge here. So CD is a bridge. So if we remove CD, there's no longer a path to get from, well, for example, from C to D or more indirectly from, say, A to F. Uh, any of the other edges can be removed. I can cut out edge DF and still get between any of the two, uh, any two vertices on the map. I can go from, uh, say, B to E, no problem, even if edge DF is removed, or even from, say, F to C, I can still get there just fine. I would just have to go through E to D and then back across. But CD, if I remove that, I now have two separate pieces. Uh, one where it might not uh, show up as easily. Here, AB is a bridge. So even though I'm not sort of connecting two closed figures, if I remove edge AB, I no longer have the ability to get from, say, A to C. I can remove BD, no problem, and still get from any one vertex to any other vertex, similarly for uh, edge CD or edge BC any of those three are removed and I can still move around. I can still get around. Okay, so some recommended problems. This is again one of our bigger sections. So this is 13.1. I would recommend 1 to 8 all and 9 to 39 on the odds. If you have any questions, please get in touch. Otherwise, stay safe out there and I'll see you for the next section.